Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through law of returns to scale. So basically till now we are changing one or two few factors, right? So here we will be changing most of the factors and in terms of incrementing both guys. So basically in one of our lecture, we have discussed about the isoquant curves and all those things, right? So at that moment, if one is increasing, the other is decreasing and we got an isoquant curve where all the unit units of production are same. So is there any use of that? No. If we increase both at a time, there could be use. So that is the introduction of return to scale guys, returns to scale. So in long term to increase the output, we may change all factors of production in the same proportion or by different proportions. So if you increase capital by two, you will be increasing your labor by two. So let us again consider labor and capital itself only guys. Okay. So let us continue. So suppose we have the initial values of the input. Those are nothing but Q is equals to F of L comma C. So L is nothing but labor. C is nothing but capital. So if we are increasing them with the equal, equal proportion, so let us assume that A, so Q dash is nothing but F of AL comma AC. So this will be your new number of labors and this will be your new capital. So where Q dash is greater than Q. Okay. So if we take a small example, the labor is in this way capital and let us keep the total production for a bit for side guys. So increase the labor equally guys. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 5, 10, 20, 40, 80, 160. So here the rest of all factors are kept constant guys like land is kept constant like let us assume one okay one acre or anything like that whatever i don't know about those acres and all those things guys. so let us assume one value so this is fixed but you are increasing the labor and capital so initially two members with five lakhs of capital will be working fine and after that four also can work when it is becoming eight there could be some concession right so now the production has a decreased a bit or became constant so even in this situation also it will be a bit tough when it reaches 32 it will be really hectic guys there are 32 members in a small room let us assume this is a room guys so initially you are having two members or two students in a room after that it became four after that it became eight after that it became 16 so till 16 you bad somehow after 32 it becomes really tough it becomes 64 means you cannot even stay in the room like that so this is something you can even assume it as a classroom or anything like that fine so basically all the other factors are kept constant and only these two factors are varying. So initially if you assume the total product initially we will be increasing right. So initially initially two are working. So now four are working. So obviously your production rate will increase. So 50 it became double plus something. So 110. So after that when you made 8. So even now also it incremented. So 110 it became 240. 240 basically it should become 220 but it became 240 because it's incrementing. So 220 plus 20 again we got here 20 units extra. Fine. So again, 16 and 40 capital. So here it became, it became started hectic. So it became 240 into 2. It became 480. It is constant. So after when you make 32, it becomes really tough. So 480 into 2, it should become 960, but it became 900 only. So from here on, it started decreasing. So similarly, if you make 64, 64 members, 64 labors, so it becomes really tough or no space for them to work properly. So 900 into 2, it should become 1000. 800 but it became 1760 so here also if you observe initially it incremented at middle it became constant after it, it started decremented so here also we are having the same issue guys okay so now let us go through the small definitions that i have just written here so here i wrote increase rate of return here it is constant here it is decrementing so that's what i have just written it here again so increasing rate of return means 5 15 to 2 we need to get 120 but we are getting 110 so we are incremented by 10 constant means we got 240 into 2 that is 480 is exactly the same decreasing is nothing but 900 into 2 we should get 1800 but we got 7 1760 so here we are decrementing so this is a small example guys so if you just plot a graph for it it will be in this way fine so if you want to draw the graph this will be better guys if you draw it in this way okay so this is the q value guys initial value so in between you will be having 2q. 2q we are having the constant rate right. So be below that we are decrementing and after that we are incrementing. So that's what the dotted lines are these two and q and capital Q are the tick lines and I have just drawn the dotted lines for k and 2k and l and 2l. So here the labor is doubled and the capital is doubled. So that's what the graph is guys. Just draw it step by step guys. Initially draw the labor guys. So let me draw it here so that we can have a practice. So this will be your labor and capital initially. So after that we have multiplied the labor and we have multiplied the capital also to L, sorry to C, capital also. So now this value will be your initial Q value and this will be your 2Q. 
so 2q is nothing but crc that is nothing but constant rate so above that it will be the incremented rate and below that it will be the decremented rate fine so that will be your graph so i hope everyone got a small idea on return to sales so in the next lecture we will be going through the cobb dongless production rule or production function so let us meet in the next tutorial thank you thanks for watching